Well, welcome back to yet another video on the Apple 2 2. One of many, many videos, and one of five that I'm currently recording or almost finished recording. But the good thing is, I'm now at a stage where I want to bleed my brakes. So, you might be wanting to bleed your brakes because you've got a spongy pedal, because you've replaced a flexi line, a caliper, uh, or maybe you just want to change your fluid. Now, for the common bits you're doing, so changing a flexi, replacing a line, repairing a line, changing a caliper, that sort of stuff there. Two standard methods work absolutely fine, or three maybe. Um, standard two-man method, where one person's on the pedal, one person's cracking nipple, that works absolutely fine. Um, or my preferred option is a pressure bleeder. Uh, I've got this the unit and I love it. Uh, worth every penny. Excellent bit of kit for bleeding brakes and clutches. Um, so pressure bleeder works fantastic as well. Or you get the vacuum bleeders, Never tried them, but I just prefer this and the idea of this. It's, it seems like a better process, to be honest. Um, so that's fine for that. Now, if you happen to have changed your master cylinder, your ABS block, or anything up there on that side of the system, then you may need to do a further bleed using diagnostics equipment um, in order to properly bleed the ABS pump. Now, we're going to primarily focus on using the one-man method because I've basically just taken off all the calipers and repaired some lines. So that should be adequate due to the fact I haven't let the mass cylinder run dry. If you have, again, be warned, you may need to do the ABS bleed. Uh, if I get a chance, I might jump into Gap ID and have a play with the bleeding procedures in there later on. Um, although I'm, I don't think it applies to all L322s, it might be only sort of 2006 onwards if that's possible. Um, depends on what software you've got really. But we're mainly focusing on pressure bleeding and I'm hoping that's going to work. So what do we need? Well, we either need a helper, a pressure bleeder, or a vacuum bleeder. Pressure bleeder is my preference. Some fluid. If you're just doing a change, a couple of litres of um, brake fluid will be adequate to do a change. Um, because I'm bleeding essentially calipers from new and basically dry, I've got five litres of fluid. Because if you've done this before, it doesn't always go to plan, and you might end up using a lot more fluid than you think to get the air out of the system. So just be warned, it's better to have too much but not enough, as you end up in trouble. Some blue rum brake cleaner, pretty much a must, just in case you make some mess really. And especially if you've got shiny painted calipers. And then, ideally, 10mm, 11mm spanner, depends on the flare nuts. I actually prefer a flare nut spanner, it just gets a bit better grip. And what I find essential is a 10 11mm six point socket on a quarter inch ratchet or bigger just because when you're cracking off a nipple to start with you don't want to be rounding them off with a spanner when you can put a six point socket on them and do a much better job so it's that and then a bit of hose and a spare bottle definitely helps uh, you get proper little bleeder bottles that, that you can hang on and have a nice little hose that goes to the nipple that's probably better but for this i find this bottle works perfect and i do the clear bottle i quite often use the clear bottles but now i've got these around that should do. Right, so let's crack on. So step one is locate your brake fluid reservoir, right there. Um, check your, well, okay, let's start. You're doing a brake fluid change. It's definitely helpful to pop a syringe in there and suck out what you can, but don't empty it, and then top it back up to between max and min with fresh fluid, because that will start you off on a good foot already. Not essential though. Um, if you're just doing a brake bleed, again, top it up to be in between max and min if you're using a pressure bleeder because what we'll do now is we'll pressurize this to around 10 15 psi and that's going to pump some fluid into the reservoir and what it will basically do is it will intend to keep the level in the reservoir steady so as you expel fluid it will replace it now i find it tends to put a bit more in than you had in there so maybe leave a bit of a wiggle room but when you're putting on your cap, if you're using a pressure bleeder, you must make sure it's sealed. So check the condition of the seal when you're screwing it on. Be gentle, do it tight but not over tight, and then keep an eye on it for a minute once you've pressurized it. Because what will happen if the seal isn't sealing, the air will expel out of this cap, and that will then fill the reservoir up with brake fluid until the point it overflows and it goes down your paintwork. Ask me how I know. <laughs> <laughs> I've had it happen before. Um, so just be really careful with that. Um, keep an eye on it. And if you're not using a pressure bleeder, using a vacuum bleeder, 
or the two-man method, when you're bleeding, you must always keep an eye on the amount of fluid and reservoir. Do not let it drop below min. Um, because if it drops too low and you suck air into the master cylinder, and then potentially the ABS block, you'll be in a worse position than when you started. Um, so just always keep that topped up, okay? Um, which is entirely what this does. It keeps that topped up and pressurizes the fluid to push it out, making it a one-man job. Excellent, I absolutely love it. So I filled this thing basically up because I might well be using quite a bit of fluid. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pump it up. Try to, one hand in a minute, uh, maybe, maybe not. hear any air escaping in there. Ah, see, yep. I did say. That's exactly what happens if it's not sealed properly. Absolute pick. Right, so now I've got to clean it off quick and empty the fluid back out. It's topped up too much in there and try again. Some cars it seals first time easy, other cars it can be a bit of a pig. So I'm going to get that sorted in a minute and I'll see you in a moment. There we go, it's now sitting at a happy level. Sitting at 10 psi, not leaking now. What a get. See, I'm not immune to issues. So now, common bleeding practice is always to start at the furthest point and work your way back to the closest point. So that would be near side rear, offside rear, offside, uh, well, when it actually goes to the ABS blocks the other side. So then, yeah, we'll just go there, there 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 basically now if you've got rear calipers pretty much all simple bleed nipple right there at the top that's i think should be the same for vented non-vented all ages fronts vary a bit if you've got an early car you'll have sliding front calipers in which case you have a single bleed nipple at the top if you've got a later car you might have brembos in which case here we've got two bleed nipples so we've got two lots of bleeding to do on a massive caliper now the video of me sort of Doing a bit of refurbishment on these calipers. Uh, it's either a previous, it must be, it's gonna be a previous video. So check that one out. Um, yeah, so let's get set up for that moment. So as I've played with all the fittings, the first thing I've done is I've gone around now to all the fittings that I've touched, anything I've done, any joints I've done, and I've just checked the 10 PSI but they're not leaking. If we are leaking, obviously I need to solve that before we go any further. Now 10 PSI is only a fraction of the power that these brake lines would be under when under proper pressure. But if they're leaking already, it's an indication you need to do some work on them. Now what I've done is I've grabbed my six-point ratchet, I've cracked my bleed nipple, put a bit of hose on it, and fed it into a bottle. So what we can kind of see, and I'm not sure you can see it on camera, um, you might better see the air bubbles there flowing through that. Now we're just going to continue this on this rear caliper until we see no more air bubbles. And then we're going to go around to every caliper from then on and just keep bleeding this way and then see what a pedal feels like. If it feels good, then you're done. If it doesn't, you're gonna have to go around and try again. You might get an indication as to what caliper's a bit dodgy. I like to give them a bit of a tap as well once in a while. Um, and maybe when I get near towards the end of bleeding procedure, push the pedal a couple times as well, just to get the system moving. But for now, our first step is to go around to all calipers like this and bleed out as much air as we can this way. So this is going to take me a few minutes. I'm going to run around and do this, and I'll see you guys at the front in a moment. All right, so we've already put two litres of fluid for the rear. One caliper, not too bad. The other one, being a bit of a pig. So, as it's almost bled, I'm going to jump onto the front ones in a minute and try and get these started. So I've topped up the fluid in the bottle, because obviously it's running low. It's a funny 11 mil this is. Oh, God, I'm going to do it. I'm going to spill any out yet. Right. Pop the hose on. There we go. Start that one bleeding. Oh, that's a nice dark, horrible fluid coming up there. Perfect. I'm going to start that bleeding in a minute. So basically same procedure again, just keep going until no air comes out. So I've been around now and bled as much air as I possibly could out the system. 
Um, this corner now might be done. I've had to go back onto it. So, so far, this rear caliper has expelled about 2.2 .2 litres of fluid. Whereas the other side, rear, about half a litre. And the fronts combined seem to go insanely easy. And they're about 250 mil per caliper to bleed all four nipples. <sighs> so, anyway, I've topped up the unit again, pressurised it a bit. And technically, this should be all we need to do. I haven't actually really tried it yet, but I thought, why not? Let's have a look at the gap ID brake bleeding procedure. One, because it can only really do good. Um, and two, for the sake of the video, I couldn't see any information online about using the gap ID tool to bleed the brakes on the L322. So we'll see in a minute if it's at all necessary, if it can help at all, or if it's just entirely useless for what we need it to do. So, we also want to go into service test, uh, ABS brake module, brake bleed in. Um, now, bearing in mind I've got the car hooked up to a battery maintainer in a minute to keep some power on it, um, just because obviously these things are firstly power-wise. Mm, yeah, why not? Open rear left wheel bleed screw. Uh, so we're rear right in a minute, so let's go. I'll set up a minute on the rear left and we'll see what happens. So, I've just opened the bleed screw. Continue. Ah, oh, prepare to pump brake pedal. Okay, one second, I'll go around to the brake pedal as well. Well, I put the brake pedal like it said. It gave me a countdown to 20 seconds, and now it's gone past the countdown and keeps going to minuses. Which means, I've got my air coming out there, to be fair. There's more air coming out. That's a bit of a confusing one. I was expecting it to activate the ABS pump and that would help us. But apparently not. So it's telling me to do the rear left, front left. Hmm. Well, I'm going to do it. Just because you want to get the air out of the system, and I've now just found more air in the system by doing that from this unit. But it's the, currently the pressure bleeder that's pushing it out because it's still on the system. So, yeah. I can't see that being a massive help, to be honest. No idea if we're using it wrong. But I'm going to continue the procedure and go around and do the calipers again like that and just see what happens and make sure no more air comes out. So, yeah, I'll crack on with that. Last well, the brakes blood. Hooray! Which is only me one thing. It's summer tea time now. Finally. Um, not sure what sequence these videos are coming out in now, but um, that was one of five videos recorded on the Alfred 2 2 which was a lot of work. A lot of work. Um, more than I intended to, but it had to be done really, didn't it? So, it was worth doing. Uh, one thing to note, so the gap ILD procedure for bleeding the brakes, I'm not entirely sure if it, it seems a bit backwards. Um, like it makes you do the rear left caliper, then the front left, then the front right, rear right, but the ABS pump and that doesn't start kicking in until you get to the front right, and then the rear left, and then it seems to kick in into all sorts by itself. Um, it's almost like it's a bit backwards, so obviously it should be kicking the ABS pump in I'm assuming for each bleed, um, whereas it does the first few bleeds at 20 seconds and then runs into minus seconds. And then when it gets to the ABS pump, it puts in like 120 seconds and then keeps doing it. And it seems odd, um, but it does activate the ABS pump. Um, it does activate the ABS valves, I think, or solenoids by the sounds of it. Um, and it's probably better than nothing, but it is a, a two-man operation really to be doing that because um, you need someone to be using the pedal and someone bleeding really. So, it's definitely better than nothing, but on my 2011, it doesn't seem like it works like it should do. Um, but it does do stuff, so, yeah. Anyway, I've rambled on enough. That is basically the brake bleeding procedure. Um, it is fairly simple. You don't need to use the ABS bleeding tool from IOD um, unless you've really modified the Playboy Mass cylinder or the ABS pump, or let it run dry. But, yeah. Other than that, the traditional two-man method of pumping 
and releasing the fluid that way works perfect. Uh, pressure bleeder works perfect as well. That's my preferred option because it's one man. And yeah, it seemed to work out perfect, which is ideal. What we want, so we've got brand new fresh fluid in it now um, and ready for another tea. So, if you happen to have enjoyed that video, I don't know why, it's a bit of a boring video to be honest, but if you did enjoy it, then I appreciate that. Why not drop me a like? It really helps the YouTube algorithm. Uh, drop me a comment, tell me if you think I've done anything wrong or there's a better way of doing it, because it's always handy to know and it's nice to share the knowledge. Um, obviously subscribe for more, because there's, well, there's plenty more coming, of course there is. There's plenty more already recorded, so why not jump back on my channel, look at all the other million how-tos, anything from repairing the telly start for the fuel burn heater to fixing no heat issues and replacing the gearbox, um, little upgrades, the tuning video, there's all sorts on it. So why not jump back, take a little peek, and with any luck, I'll see you guys next time. I've been Jordan. Cheers.